Okay, so while browsing Google looking for a new study game I wanted to review with my Spanish and science students. I came across this game called The Unfair Game and then modified it to my own style of teaching, which I like to use a lot of interaction with my students. In this case, I use the smart notebook software, but if you have any interactive whiteboard or I've seen this game done on the internet using just construction sheets of paper with numbers on the other side, um, however you want to set it up. But the basic idea is simple. You need a bunch of, you need an array of numbers. I usually use from negative 9 to positive 9. Of course, in an array of 16, I'm going to be short a few numbers, but you could add a zero in there if you have a bigger array or two negative nines. I try to have about each number have an opposite, so negative nine and a positive nine doesn't always work out that way, just again depends on how big of an array you have. So I put all those numbers back behind these balloons, and then for those who don't use your smart board software very much, best way to find these balloons that do this to where they cover up the numbers is just go right into your gallery and type in the word balloons, hit search, it'll be under your interactive um, multimedia and right in here is the balloon pop that I'm using. So I just covered up all the numbers. There's many other ways to cover them up in SmartBoard but I enjoy this part I guess. And so the basic idea is to divide your classroom up into teams. Um, teams two to four would be great. Small classes use two, you know, as it gets bigger use three or four. I don't know that I'd go more than that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to ask your study question to your students. For example, in my Spanish class, if I'm saying conjugate I went, they could say fui. If they get it right, they have a choice. They can either pop a balloon or pass that opportunity to any team of their choice. They could say, hey, team four, you guys pick a balloon, and they have to pick a balloon. And the whole goal behind this is to end up with zero, or the team with the closest number to zero, whether it's negative one or one or just plain zero, they're the winners at the end when all the balloons have been popped. So if team one says fui, they could then say, okay, team three, you go ahead and you have to pick a balloon and so we pop this balloon and now team three actually has seven points so then you go to team two and you ask team two a question and team two misses that question that's okay I now say sorry team two you missed that question team three it's your turn and team three team three gets to then answer the question if they answer it they then get to choose whether to pop a balloon or to Pass the balloon. Well, team three has seven. They don't want seven. They want less than seven by a bunch. They want to get down to zero. So they might end up saying, okay, we'll go ahead and pop a balloon, and they may pick this one. So now team three has a total of five points instead of seven points. And so then you go on to team four, and team four then may pass it to team one and so forth until all the balloons are popped. And now you tally up their scores. The fun part about this game was that it was way more competitive than I ever thought. And the kids did their best to analyze the balloons and decide where Mr. Weir might have put the, the bigger numbers and smaller numbers. And the neat thing about this game is it's constantly changeable. All I need to do is move my numbers around. Um, and so forth and you can move your balloons and make all sorts of patterns however you guys want to do it but it was a fun game i encourage you to try it for more ideas visit us at educationalresource.org